Hey everybody, Josh KI6NAZ. Thanks for clicking on the Ham Radio Crash Course. I do appreciate you coming out and watching the videos. Today we're going to be talking about the curious case of the Baofeng T1. Let's talk about it. The Baofeng T1 is a UHF two-way radio. It is not type accepted for GMRS, so you should, you know, again, looking, hearkening back to my video that I made talking about FRS and GMRS and using Baofengs to transmit on there, you should really only use this to transmit on the amateur frequencies. With that said, it does have limited, and we'll talk about it later, VHF capabilities. Hey everybody, before we get started, I'd really appreciate it if you could give me a thumbs up. It does help the YouTube algorithm, helps out the channel, and shows YouTube that you think this content is good and it should go in front of other people. Thanks. This is primarily a tiny radio that you can keep on your person. You can have it pre-programmed, ready to go. Uh, it's something that has a little hole here for a lanyard if you want to put it around your neck. And it's cheap, right? That's kind of why you might be looking at it. Um, some of the key features, I think some of the main things that, that why people look at this radio is that it has a micro USB charge port here on the bottom. So you can charge this off of a USB battery bank. That's why it, it shows up a lot when people ask questions on it. And in fact, uh, these uh, two of them were sent to me by Empire Outfitters that, that found me on Instagram and asked if I would be interested in, in taking a look at them. Uh, they don't sell these. They just wanted me to kind of give my opinion on them. So I'll give it right up front because you just really don't need a review and we'll explain why in a little bit. They are a UHF radio that is fairly capable. I can hit a repeater that is about 50 miles away from me as the, the crow flies, although it is on the top of a relatively tall mountain. I can hit it, I can hit it fine. So in the sense that it is usable for UHF repeater work within relative proximity to that repeater or close in simplex comms, uh, this is a fine radio. It is USB rechargeable, which separates it from the pack from a lot of other radios. However, there are some glaring disadvantages to this radio that, that we're going to talk about right now, exactly. To kind of get into the mindset of, of this radio, I need to go back a couple of radios ago in time. The first being the Yaesu VX3R, which bears a striking resemblance to the Baofeng UV3R because they basically stole the mold uh, from the Yesu when they when they made this radio. The Yesu is a fantastic radio. If you can find one, they're used. You can only get them used. They don't make them anymore. Great radio. In fact, I'm I'm showing Universal Radio website for this radio right there. If you can find one, they're they're a good buy if you're interested in a really ultra portable radio. When the UV3R came out though, this was compelling to me and why I mention it a lot in kind of my, my bug out bag builds is because this comes with a proprietary, you know, a DC jack, a pin jack with a USB cable. This will charge off of a USB connection, much like the T1 will. And it's dual band. Nope, not a lot of power output, but it is dual band and that's why I was so attracted to this radio. Also limited in the amount of channels that you can program into it and functions okay. It's kind of like your last ditch radio, if you will. You could keep this in a bag somewhere, you can charge it relatively quickly, and it actually uses uh, cell phone batteries in the back. Okay, so the, those are two radios that, that I like. I think they're, they're good for last ditch effort type stuff. Well, where does the T1 fit into this? Well, the problem with the T1 you look at the two and they, they have a striking resemblance in the, in the controls or the lack thereof. There's no dial pad. There's no real capability of, of keying in a frequency on the T1. In fact, this is only programmable via Chirp or pro, you know some kind of programming software. And to program it, you must use a FTDI or similar serial converter chip. If you use the FTDI, as I've always mentioned, the chips therein, you don't need a driver. You just plug them into Windows and, and they'll work. Uh, so if you go with something that doesn't have an FTDI, you're going to likely need a driver to make that work. I ended up buying a programming cable off of eBay. I'll post the link in the description if, if you end up going down the road of, of picking up this radio. I do have something that will drive some of you absolutely batty. The volume control is 
crazy on this thing. The, the zero volume, zero, is still audible out of the speaker, and then one notch, just one, is already too loud. So there's something really funky going on. I'm going to do some further investigation. Uh, there's probably going to be more videos coming out on this. I've got to figure out some things that I may do with it. But um, here's an audio clip on, on me just going through the volume and then me talking um, over Simplex into this. And yeah, you're, you might be surprised. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. This is speaker volume setting number one, just number one. Here's a mid volume, we'll call it. Nia 6, November Alpha Zulu, speaker right in the middle, middle setting. And lastly, blow your doors off distorted. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu, how's this? Pretty distorted, right? Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu, radio check, radio test. Here's the flip side, Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu, flip side into my Kenwood. Talking into a Baofeng T1. I should note also there's a really long squelch tail, or tail on the end of this. Check this out. I let go uh, quite a while away. Let me turn this way down. See how long it takes to unkey? Uh so that's my that's my glaring problem. It, it's for me to really get behind a radio, I, I kind of need to have the ability to field program it. Believe it or not, this one does. The FT3R does. It has a uh, kind of knob on the top here that you can turn to go through frequencies. It's not at all a, a desirable way to key in frequencies, but, but you still have that capability, whereas this guy you don't. And that's the glaring problem that I have with it. The second problem, and actually for some of you this is probably not a big deal, is that uh, that's a fixed antenna. It's a UHF coil of wire inside this little nub. Now you can modify these, you can snip off, you can take the case apart, snip off the nub here, and you can attach an SMA and then you, you would be able to put an antenna like this onto it, which would give you the capability to use VHF. I know I mentioned VHF earlier in the video. You can program VHF frequencies in this and you can transmit on them, however, However, there's no antenna jack for a VHF antenna, so by keying up repetitively on this radio, you run the chance of damaging it. You will overheat the radio, you will likely not be putting out the appropriate power, and this thing's already pretty much gimped uh, with power output, I believe it's around a watt. Um, so you're kind of looking at this for VHF only communication, and at 16 channels you don't have a whole heck of a lot, but they are inexpensive. I've seen prices go anywhere from $15 all the way up to about $30. $30 being the Amazon price, which is usually pretty high for Chinese radios, you know, comparatively. So the feel of it is, is kind of cheap, right? The, the flappies on the side here, uh, by the way, it has a, a door that says speaker and microphone, but, but really it's just one jack. It's a, it's a three ring or a four ring, if you will, um, microphone and speaker combination jack. It has a flashlight, which you would expect on Baofengs. They all pretty much have some kind of LED. But this one actually has a reflector on it internally in, in the flashlight. So you do get a bit of a, a, a kind of a footprint with it, a bit of a throw of the light. It has the FM radio that you, you might also expect from a Baofeng. And the size is appropriate for a kind of last ditch radio type of thing. So. With, with me being a, an advocate of the 3R, which you can't buy, sorry about that, everybody asks me about that all the time, where do you get them? Uh, they don't sell them anymore, they're not manufactured, so you're basically buying them off of eBay, which can be troubling. Is this radio as good as the 3R? No, it's, it's not. Um, probably because of the two reasons I mentioned, the, the ability to field program it, field program meaning control on the radio itself, and then the ability to do VHF and, and a secondary antenna, right? You could plug anything. You could plug a J pool into this. Um, so it, it fills a niche for someone. Uh, I'm not necessarily that person. I think it would be fine in a, a hamvention or a small group space where you could use something like this. And if you weren't worried about being on VHF, then it would work probably fine. Other than that, it, it has a fairly limited uh, scope or, or use case where I would deploy one. Throw it in a bag, uh, throw it in a box, maybe you get a couple of them, 
program them all the same, give them to your family, again with that laminated card that I talked about in the MCOM, the first MCOM video I did, that little makeup, sto make believe story that happened. You could use this radio and replace the 3R since these are available in the market, absolutely. But you'd have to depend on the UHF frequencies and understand UHF calling frequency is not generally as popular as VHF calling frequency. So wanted, I want to say thank you very much to Imperial Outfitters for, for sending me these uh, radios. And again, if you do go down the route of getting a programming cable for them, it will work when you program it. It works fine. It programs just like any other Baofeng, basically. But you can't program it without that programming cable. So if you are thinking about getting one of these, keep that in mind. I'm going to go ahead and run the unboxing video that I did for the box that Empire Outfitters sent me. They were very kind in sending it. So again, thank you. Thank you all for doing that. So it's not a complete buy for me, and it's not a complete don't buy either, but you do need to appreciate why you would be deploying this radio. If this is just a fun radio around the house that you want to talk on and do, you know, talk on a repeater that you really have no problem hitting, well, this is probably fine because it's USB chargeable. If you want to throw it in a go box, great. You know, th there's lots of different applications of where you can put this, and if they fit in your wheelhouse of what you're looking for, then it'll probably be okay but it is fairly limited. So those are my thoughts, kind of a mini review on the Baofeng T1s. And this is something I expected, but not packaged the way it is. And so I, I think there might be some surprises in here. I got a box from Empire Outfitters, empireoutfitter.com, sorry, empireoutfitter.com. They follow me on Instagram and uh, they said, hey, you, you talk about the UV3R a lot, but you've never mentioned the Baofeng T1. And he said, hey, um, we've got one. We'll send it to you if you want to do a review. And I said, okay, sure, absolutely. And he goes, hey, what's your favorite color? I said, orange. <laughs> and so I started getting, <laughs> started packing this here. I'm noticing a trend, lots of orange things. This is nice. I, I, uh, I can never have enough of these. When you got kids, leave this in your bag. Yeah, <laughs> when she finds out how much you actually paid. I like that. Okay. So got some Starburst. Let me give those to the kiddos. Hey, look at this. Thanks for all the awesome info you post on, on your SM. I've watched a ton of your YouTube vids and learned so much. The crash course is also helping me study while well under lockdown in New York. Keep up the great work. The included knife is a small token of my appreciation. Whoa, a knife. Oh man. Okay, so I, I think this is our Baofeng. Yes, it is. There's our T1. I'm, uh, yeah, I've been wanting to look at it, but you're, you're, you're playing my hand for me. So now I'll check it out. Um, okay, here's something. And there's the user's guide. Cool sticker. Oh yeah. One of the best army men, the, the crazy bayonet charge army man. More stickers, very good. Uh, oh my gosh, he sent two. Whoa. Wow, okay. Well, I may have to give one of these away then. What is the knife? Oh, cool. I actually saw this on their site. Um, I'm gonna have to look up the name for this really quick. Oh, I wonder what this is for. No, that would be illegal. The Wilmont Knives Beer Defender. The thick beer defender. Um, yeah, you know what this is for. Maybe, but you know, follow the law, right? Sure. Whoa. McNeese Custom Knives. Oh, it's in a cool leather sheath. Ooh. That's fantastic. Oh man, that's really nice. It's like a boot knife. Did I have it right? Yeah, I had it right. Wow, that's really cool. Yeah, awesome. Well, this is gonna be a thumbnail for fun right there. Make sure you uh, check out empireoutfitters.com 
Pretty cool website too. Uh, this thing's fantastic. I'm gonna uh, look up how much trouble I can get into with this thing in California. I'm assuming boatloads. Is it like that? I'm guessing. You don't want to do that. You want to do that, I think. Post in the, the comments how I'm doing this wrong. So again, I'm Josh, KI6NAZ. Thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate all your support. Again, thank you to Empire Outfitters for sending me these uh, two little guys to take a look at. I'll leave it at that. Uh, hope this wasn't too, <laughs> too much of a downer of a video if you've been looking at these or, or you really like them. Maybe tell me in the comments below what, what's your use case for this radio or what you think your use case might be if you pick some of them up. I'd appreciate it if you subscribe because I do live stream every Saturday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Until then, I'll talk to you later. See ya.